morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, whichever the part of the world you are. Um, I first of all congratulate all the participants as well as the speakers for being part of the Parcel and Post Expo in Vienna, Austria. Unfortunately, because of the COVID-19 situation, a lot of participants may not able to attend, but I'm sure a lot of people are attending um, the virtual mode. Um, thank you for giving opportunity to, to the post PG to present the, a short presentation on the um, postal area of the postal area. Um, as we know that the post has seen a huge um, um, uh, changes and transformation over a period of time. Um, if you remember those post services which is to be segmented toward the parcel post, prison of war post, pre-adesuse post, registered post, and then EMS post. So post has really gone through the uh, huge transformation of the manual driven processes to the automated processes. Um, with the post, with the post PG being um, a, a portion of the island nation, uh, which is close to the Australia and New Zealand, we are one of the island state and we have a different challenges compared to the developed nations. And if you see that the postal network is being demarcated with the developed nations, developing nations, least developed nation and small island nation. So each country has got a different challenges. With the post PG, our challenges are different compared to the developed and developing nations into that one. So we also believe that the um, uh, all the most of the DOs, um, which are the postal operators, are governed by the government agencies, um, and they are all state-owned enterprises. And I am a strong believer that the, all the state-owned enterprises should be performing as a commercial driven organization because end of the day it is the money of the people and uh, the taxpayer money must be utilized in such a way that the all the SOE starts performing um, well for the sake of the community and, um, and to, uh, for the employees for the all the stakeholders involved into the business I'm glad the post PG along with the all the team is performing so well during this COVID-19 situation. We all know that the COVID has really pushed us uh, um, back. Um, we all gone through the different uh, stress level. Um, and um, one of the challenge what post-PG has faced uh, during the COVID-19 situation is we literally got locked down by various countries and the parcels, the merchandising, the e-packets which used to come into the country stops um, happening. If you see the developed nations, normally they have the city-wide cross um, uh, logistical um, uh, activities used to happen. They were selling inter-country, inter whereas the post, uh, whereas in Fiji, most of the e-packet come from overseas and that's where our business hampers drastically onto that. We reached to the stage where our uh, revenue declined more than 80%. And that's where we thought that we really need to um, work on to the different strategies where we can look after our business and um, take out the drop in revenue and sustain the business was one of the important um, attributes we had at that time. So we were thinking what sort of strategies we should use, um, how do we come up all this situation where all the revenue is going down and we need to look after our staff, look after our customers and the day. So we use the various strategies, we, one of them is a pastel model we use, uh, where we work on the political, economical, social factor, technological factor, environmental and legal. But that was not sufficient to determine whether the pistol model will work onto that. So we thought that why not we use the BCG model as well. Boston Consulting model where we thought that certain products are um, performing well, certain products are in the declining stage. So we analyzed the each product category in such a way that where the market potential is high but our products are not performing we start working on to giving the more marketing push onto those products. 
we also decided that those products which are not working well or which are um, slowly going down it's time to harvest those products or prune those products so that um, the return on investment in totality becomes better into that one based on to that we decided that why not we launch the new products so when we were going into the uh, traditionally post pg uh, do the postal services as well as uh, we also sell the stationery product um, especially to the educational institute and corporate but that's a seasonal product and we thought why not we have a some different product which can put on to the shelf and people can utilize that and with the team when we discuss this and we come up with a new idea that the today the need of the people is a groceries people wanted to have a um, groceries uh, so that they are living uh, remain cons um, able so we launched the grocery literally in a fraction of two months time and most of the shelf we fill up with the grocery product and our op objective at that time was not to maximize the profitability but to ensure that we keep the pro prices lower so that people can afford our products and get the uh, get the products at the affordable prices so eventually there was a lot of uh, uh, lot of uncertainty because we were not into the grocery business and it was a learning curve for our team how do we merchandise how do we price uh, sync strategy what product to be put on to the shelf which product should go at the back all those thoughts process we starts working on to that and we learn a lot and we engage some outsiders including the suppliers who keep on keep on teaching us how the product should be put onto the shelf so eventually in a three months time and four months time the uh, thing starts working and we were glad that our revenue starts going up into the grocery side so as we go on to those things so we also have work on to the different product category we thought that why we stuck up only on to the stationery and grocery and eventually we launch um, the insurance products so whether it is um, um, term life insurance whether it vehicle insurance so we start expanding the product category whether it is a vertical or horizontal it's basically product extensions you starts giving uh, so that the you increase the valid share of the customer and that really works well as well during the decline of uh, um, uh, stage of the product life cycle we saw a lot of product like the postage mails uh, private mails um, the rental we used to have a properties where a lot of people starts vacating the place um, our bill pay agency commission has gone down um, telecards has gone down the fast phones has gone down so this product starts going down and that's where we identified that either we rejuvenate this products give more energy to these products so that they can bounce back and start sell, um, uh, getting the better revenue into the market the other thing we also found out what products are in growth stage and we realized that the parcels are there the ems products um, are the great opportunity for us to pump more marketing budget into that so we put up a um, uh, more marketing campaign for domestic market as well as international ems market and to tell you that this has rock skyrocketed with the transactions with the ems local as well as international um, we also gone into the um, uh, smart mail where we print the invoices for the many of the companies because many of the organizations were at the home during the lockdown this product really works well as well so these are the revenue drivers we starts working on to that um, we also thought that since the postal is changing and the transformation is needed in today's business because our people were used to have the postal services uh, delivery for ages and to have that change to happen to change the mindset of the people is not an easy job yeah, it takes a long long time and that's where we start thinking that how do we change the um, people mindset people culture into the organization we would like to have the productivity driven organization where people 
put the efforts in delivering the productivity deal. So we had a couple of training programs, we have internal sessions, we executive st team starts understanding um, the new objectives and goals, and then we start developing the team. Uh, just to give the good example, we used to have a standard bonus system being a government organization which always happen. But we developed the PMS system which is a performance measurement system. And during that period we realized that um, the lot of people who are doing extraordinary job and they got the higher scores in terms of their PMS. And we are happy to deliver those um, um, results and give more incentive to our own people. That boosted the confidence of the, um, our team. At the same time, we also increase the prices. Um, as we know that any price increase takes a while to digest into the market. But we thought that it is an essential, um, essential element for our sustainability of the business. And that's where we have um, increased the prices in a slighter way. We also ensured that it will not give a huge impact onto the customers as such. And that price increase also help us to boost um, our uh, uh, postal business. Apart from uh, various BCG models and product lifecycle strategies we use, um, one of the important element of transformation we realize is a 3R strategy. Basically, 3R strategy works on reforms, restructure, and re-engineer the business. Being a government, a lot of reforms activity is required, and the change management happens in a very gradual process. And we start working the reforms from the top management, and it starts penetrating into the end, um, um, end um, uh, employee of the organization. We also did a lot of restructuring. We did the re rationing of the people. Um, if one particular business uh, has fallen down and there are a lot of people into that department, so we, re we train those people for the different uh, SBU and, with, and then we shifted and transferred them into the different thing. So what happened is during that process, they all got new skills development and it helped them to learn the new products and new services to be delivered. We also did the re-engineering of the, our current um, uh, manual driven process in, into the automation and that really helped us to utilize this 3R strategies onto that one. During COVID we also took one of the important aspects is looking after our staff. Um, it was uh, critical to look after those staff who are working for post PG for 25-30 years time. Um, whether we pay them during the isolation, whether it is an is um, positive cases, we created a beds of the into the organization so that anybody um, get into the positive, they will be going um, into the isolation room into the postal operations. We also uh, uh, transform their skills development, capacity building, and that's where we give the more focus onto that. Obviously, the cost cutting was a, one of the major uh, restructure strategy we utilize, and it really works well for the post PG. So, in today, what, what uh, the post PG is becoming a major Pacific hub. We have a Pacific nations, neighbor countries, and we look forward for their support, and we would like to support them as well. I'm glad that recently, into the UPU Congress, that Director General has. Uh, um, candidly um, informed to the people that the Pacific is a wonderful, um, wonderful region, and I, I totally agree, and uh, I, I agree as well as um, compliment for being so considerate, so compassionate towards the Pacific nation. I, I am confident that anybody who come from the different region to the post to the um, Fiji they will see that the big smile, big bright uh, hospitality, this is the beauty of the Fiji. And whenever people come into that, they never get dejected onto that one. And that has really helped us to um, diversify business as well. Today, Post Fiji is venturing to become a Pacific hub for um, all our neighboring um, countries. So logistics, supply chain, 
um, e-commerce which we have developed which is working fantastically well with the post PG and we would like to give this sort of uh, services to our neighboring country so they really don't need to invent those product and services so that we can help our neighborhood brothers and sisters by giving our services to the um, all the Pacific nation. So on behalf of post PG, I uh, congratulate once again to all the participants uh, for this um, uh, World Leaders Forum during the post and uh, parcel and post expo in Vienna. Thank you very much. Bula Vanaka from the Fiji Islands. We are proud of our people and our diverse cultures. Last year we commemorated our 50th anniversary of Fijian independence. We are also proud of our rugby as we are the only nation that has won back-to-back -back Olympic gold in sevens rugby. Post Fiji in one company that has contributed vastly to the development and economic growth of Fiji. The history of Post Fiji began in 1870 when the first set of Fiji stamps were issued by the local newspaper. This was followed by the passing of the Postal Act by the Fiji government in 1871. Today Post Fiji has 58 post offices across Fiji and this has enabled Fijians to have easy access to essential service like bill pay, parcel post, post shop, EMS courier and so much more. Today Post Fiji continues to evolve its services to enhance its delivery and customer satisfaction. Telegraphic money order which used to take hours to transmit can now be transmitted instantly through the new post money order service. Customers can now access Post Fiji services from the comfort of their home from anywhere in the world through Post Fiji's online shop called eShop Fiji. Customers can even buy groceries from the comfort of their home or office with quick deliveries done to their doorstep. The consistency of Post Fiji's postal services has been achieved through Fiji Secure and Precise Sea Freight Services. And our world-class airlines ensure the effective delivery of our airmails to the doorstep of the world. At Post Fiji, we deliver more. Shop online and send cash to friends and relatives in Fiji by simply visiting www.postfiji.com.fj.